This is Pitcher, a ghost town in the northeastern corner of Oklahoma. Called by some America's Chernobyl, this former hub of the mining industry would have its dark history concluded not by the mountains of toxic waste, but rather a threat from above. On May 10th, 2008, a violent EF4 tornado would rip through Pitcher as a part of its 76 mile path. By its end, it would claim the lives of 21, injure hundreds, and bring devastation to several communities in Oklahoma and Missouri, including the disincorporation of Pitcher altogether. For being impactful as this tornado was, it ultimately has been seemingly lost to history. Even long before the 2008 tornado, Pitcher's past has been nothing less than tumultuous. At the turn of the 20th century, Mining operations were expanding across the tri-state region as deposits of lead and zinc were continually being discovered. An area of land belonging to the Quapaw tribe was found to be extremely rich in the sought-after ores. When the Quapaw refused to lease out their land to prospective mining companies, the Federal Bureau of Indian Affairs came in and declared the landowners incompetent, signing the leases in their place. The community of Pitcher came to be in 1918, sitting atop of the mines being dug. It quickly exploded into a city of 14,000 people as the area around Tar Creek became the most lucrative mining operation in the region. Fueled by the needs of the First World War, millions of dollars worth of lead and zinc were pulled from the ground at breakneck pace. But after the initial mining boom and the conclusion of the Second World War, supply and demand curves shifted and mining activity steadily decreased along with the population. By the end of the 1960s, mining had all but ceased in Pitcher, but the lasting effects of it were only just beginning to be realized. As mining operations pulled out of town, left behind with the abandoned mine shafts were millions of tons of mine tailings, or chat. Decades of unregulated mining had not required any cleanup of the tailings, resulting in massive mounds of the mining waste all over the city. In these chat piles were extremely potent traces of lead and cadmium, both being extremely toxic metals. Tailing piles would begin to contaminate the air, waterways, and deep groundwater of Pitcher. By the 1980s, the Environmental Protection Agency became involved, and the gravity of the situation in Pitcher was becoming fully realized. Over 60% of the children in town had lead poisoning. Chronic disease in the population was over 30% higher from the national average. The Tar Creek area was turned into an EPA Superfund site in 1983. A Superfund site is an area that is contaminated by hazardous waste that the EPA comes in and investigates and orchestrates a cleanup. However, the final blow for Pitcher's environmental problems would ultimately come from the Army Corps of Engineers. They found over 80% of the structures in town had been undermined so severely that they were at serious risk of collapsing into the abandoned mines below. All of these factors forced the ultimate decision in 2006 that Pitcher would need to be condemned. It was simply too hazardous to live there anymore. While the buyout of properties slowly got underway, Mother Nature would step in on May 10th, 2008. The 2008 tornado season had already been off to a busy start. Large outbreaks in February and March had already made the season a potential record breaker. That trend would continue into May, where leading up to the 10th, an active pattern had already wreaked havoc across the southern plains and southeast. By the morning of the 10th, a deep trough had loaded up from the northwest and was about to eject across the southeast. With it, a strong surface low formed off of the Rockies and barreled across the southern plains. Moisture was drawn in towards the surface low and contained between a dry line and warm front. This is where a warm sector would develop in between. The writing was on the wall for the Storm Prediction Center as they issued a moderate risk contour. This spelled extreme concern for northeastern Oklahoma and southern Missouri as much more potent low-level wind shear was present near the surface low. The atmosphere was near perfect for tornadoes. At 4 p.m. local time, a storm would explode upward off of the dry line in far southeastern Kansas. It quickly organized a mesocyclone, making this a supercell thunderstorm. At 5.20 p.m., just yards south of the Oklahoma-Kansas border, the tornado would touch down, 
It quickly intensified, crossing US Route 59 and the Neosho River. In between, several mobile homes would be impacted and trees would be made quick work of. Primarily still tracking east, the storm took aim at the Tar Creek region, with Pitcher squarely in the crosshairs. As it entered the Tar Creek Superfund site, it struck a massive tailings pile north of the town of Cardin. Mining waste filled the tornado's condensation funnel before entering Pitcher. Between Tar Creek and Harnell Park, blocks of manufactured homes would be shredded with ease. Past that, several more chat piles would be hit, adding to the lethal wind-driven debris as wooden framed houses would be stripped to their foundations. Upon exiting Pitcher, the tornado had claimed the lives of six residents, injured over 150, and damaged or destroyed 232 homes. Just southeast of Pitcher in the Tar Creek Superfund site is the Oklahoman town of Quapaw, which fortunately would only take a glancing blow. The tornado was weakening, but the storm had an ace up its sleeve. Just to the south, a smaller cell was quickly ingested by the dominant supercell. This merger would spool up a second tornado north of the dying tornado. They would combine, breathing new life into the storm as it would cross I-44 and enter the state of Missouri. While not as densely populated as Southern Pitcher, multiple homes lined either side of Iris Road northwest of the town of Racine. At EF4 intensity, the homes along this stretch of road would be flattened in wind road into the surrounding fields. At the intersection with Missouri State Route 43 was 21-year-old firefighter Tyler Casey. Dispatched from Seneca, Missouri to the location to monitor the storm, he would warn a motorist changing his tire and two residents in a nearby home of the impending danger. While those folks made it out safely, Tyler was unable to make it back to his vehicle in time. He would be fatally injured. Other motorists on State Route 43 were thrown, some of which over a half mile. Between the Missouri-Oklahoma border and State Route 86 running through the heart of Racine, 14 people would be killed and nearly 200 would be seriously injured. The tornado would then cross Interstate 49 before traversing north of the city of Neosho. Along US Route 60, a now tightened vortex would cut a swath of destruction northeast of downtown, flinging trees and severely damaging over a dozen more homes. The tornado's east-southeast shift would spare the center of Granby, Missouri, though it unfortunately would put it on a collision course with the smaller town of Newtonia. It would make a direct impact. Beyond Newtonia, several sheet metal livestock barns would bear the brunt of the tornado, but its weakened state would maintain until north of the town of Purdy, where a mobile home would be lofted into a patch of trees, killing the resident sheltered inside. The tornado's final moments would be south of McDowell, Missouri, roping out 76 miles from its origin point in Oklahoma. Emergency responders and even the National Guard descend onto the impacted areas. In southwestern Missouri, first responders found that a shocking number of fatalities were associated with vehicles while the rest were tied to weakly built manufactured homes. It was yet another case that emphasized just how deadly sheltering in a car or mobile home was in a tornado. In total, 350 people would be treated for serious injuries, and 21 perished in the storm. In Pitcher, it was quickly realized that this would be the final straw for the community. The EPA made it clear that the tornado undoubtedly disturbed even more lead-filled mining waste, making the tornado cleanup effort a significant health risk. While residents picked up what they could, surveyors poured over the damage left behind. The official survey would rate the pitcher tornado as an EF4, with estimated peak winds of 175 miles per hour. Noted in the official survey was that even given the massive size of the chat piles, they had no impact on tornado intensity. In tragic fashion, Mother Nature had found a way to expedite the plan to vacate the city. The government would quickly cut the remaining checks for residents to relocate and find a new place to call home. The city's municipalities ended its operations on September 1, 2009. Pitcher, Oklahoma, was no more.
In a full circle moment, the Quapa tribe would be the ones that looked to restore and clean up the lands around Tar Creek. Spearheading the cleanup with EPA backing, they had moved over 3 million tons of chat into the abandoned mines. In 2019, the EPA updated their plan for Tar Creek to expedite the cleanup process, which is still being acted upon today. As of 2024, Pitcher is a modern day ghost town. Nearly all structures have been cleared away, with overgrowth claiming the foundations and streets. The story of Pitcher, Oklahoma will forever be one of the great tragedies in American industrial history. Even so, it would ultimately be Mother Nature that would bring it to its final conclusion. Until next time, stay safe out there when it comes to severe weather.